or lack of exercise, um, not enough water, and uh, these are all extremely important things, uh, but now we have added, I think, uh, the uh, uh, ever-present uh, these days uh, item of coronavirus. And uh, there is just as much obligation for us to live healthfully uh, in regards to infections as it is to live healthfully in terms of our other aspects of our lifestyle. And I just wanted to show you this slide from the uh, Tulsa County Health Department. We've actually had a little slight improvement in the last couple of days. You can see there was quite a spike a few days ago, but we're still, if you look at the earlier uh, part of the graph back in March and April, uh, we're still well above what we were when the, everything was shut down. So we're not out of the woods yet. And uh, also just this reminder that um, the uh, important age range is not the old folks. Uh, the important age range is the 18 to 35 and the 36 to 49 year olds who together make up 63% of the new cases. So um, uh, people in this age range particularly need to consider uh, this important uh, aspect of their uh, relationship with God. And uh, I am a, a geek about medical things, including COVID-19. I read this article, uh, which was taken from the Neurology Journal, and just to make it a little easier to read, uh, there actually can be neurologic damage if you if you develop coronavirus infection. Stage one is very simple. You just get a little problem with nerve cells in your nose or your mouth that makes you lose your sense of taste or smell, perhaps temporarily, sometimes permanently. Stage two, we can develop blood clots from the lungs because the coronavirus gets into the lungs and that can travel to the brain and cause, what does it say? A stroke. And stage three, the virus itself invades the brain with seizures, confusion, and later on, multiple sclerosis and Parkinsonism if you survive the seizures and confusion aspect. This is what we call encephalitis. So uh, COVID-19 is a lot more than a mild flu. I think we could all agree. And um, I read uh, in the Tulsa World uh, yesterday about the, um, uh, uh, the the upcoming holiday weekend and you know everything uh, people are going to be planning on doing which is all well and good but it is important uh, they pointed out uh, to keep in mind uh, these precautions to maintain small groups if in your enjoyment of the fourth to maintain distance keep your distance uh, wash your hands a lot and wear a mask, not only to protect yourself, but especially to protect others. So, uh, and I just, I can't say this, emphasize this too much. Wearing a mask is not uh, an infringement on your liberty. It is a protection to your neighbor. You're doing something for your neighbor by wearing a mask. So, uh, enough on uh, COVID-19. Uh, let's bow our heads for just a brief word of prayer. Our Father in heaven, we're grateful for the uh, information that you have given us in your scriptures about the uh, importance of maintaining our bodies as your temple. And we, we live in a time of great uh, harm and of great potential danger. And yet, as Christians, we have to keep moving in the world, keep our witness going to those around us, and we just pray for wisdom uh, that we will conduct ourselves in the way that will best uh, present your love and your character to everyone we meet. Uh, and we pray these things in Jesus' name. Announcements. I have a few announcements to go through. Not a lot, but some things are still going on. Online Vacation Bible School. If you have children, especially if you want to do it if you're not a child, that's fine. Go 
right ahead. Enjoy yourself. But if you have a child who you would like to see entertained with something enlightening and uplifting, this would be a perfect opportunity to have Vacation Bible School online. So I encourage you to read about this, and if you have any questions, you can talk to Debbie Childers, call Debbie. She was going to have our vacation Bible school here, but with the current situation, we decided, and she decided it was better to do this online program, And but she still has all the information. So I encourage you to, to do that. And also... That's this coming week, and then the week after that, we have online camp meeting, and it's all listed in your bulletin, and, you know, some very good speakers, so I'm looking forward to that, you know, it's easy to find good admin speakers online, but I'm looking forward to find some, finding some that are geared toward us, and I, I really hope that's the case, it will be interesting to see how this goes, uh, because you know I can see that in the future, and a lot of different things is have more online services, and how important that is. Also, we'll go into business session just for a couple of minutes. We have second reading for Amy Gill from the Gentry SDA Church and Letha Hamilton from the Broken Arrow SDA Church, and Irene McCoon coming in by profession of faith. Is there a motion to accept them in membership? Is there a second? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's carried. Also, we have a second reading on some new officers. You know, we started over, or starting over in July with our new officers. Judy Miller as the church treasurer. Jeremiah and Brandy Williams, that's the junior Sabbath school class leaders. Is there a motion to accept? Motion. Second. It is carried. Thank you very much for doing that. Let's bow our heads for prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for being here with us today. We just value your presence. We just love to have you as a partner with us in this. We just hope that you will send the Holy Spirit to be in this church to help it to grow, especially be with our speaker today. Give him words of wisdom that will encourage us and enlighten us. Please be with us. Help us to open our minds to your workings and to the words we hear. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please stand for our song service. Yes, that's...
lucky to be in America, to have our freedom of religion. Battles have been fought over this, and it is, we just thank God for the things that he has done for us and for our country. children's offering normally we would have the kids come up but because of the we're not going to I'm sorry we, we, we are encourage you to put it in with your tithe envelope or how if you do it online giving or wherever you do it to encourage that because school I didn't make the announcement but in the bulletin it lists when registration day is coming up here in just a couple of months. So, you know, it takes money. And this is what our worthy student fund goes for, to help those who need a little extra help to get, be able to go to our church school. Now, who's telling our children's story? It's a video, okay? Let's go ahead. On the island of Puerto Rico, a teacher gave Kermit and the rest of his class an interesting homework assignment. 
The teacher asks the students to find someone in need and then help that person with something meaningful. Kermit smiled and thought this was an easy task. He already enjoyed helping people, so all he needed then was someone to help. Some of the classmates got together after school and decided if they teamed up, they could help even more people. Perhaps they could feed all of the homeless people in their town. So one student volunteered to bring rice and beans, and another student to bring a side dish, and others said they would bring salad and juice. When the feeding day came, all the arrangements were ready. The students met in the town square, where many homeless people often sat all day and slept on the benches. The students set up a nice table and placed bowls of rice, beans, and other dishes on the table. One of the students brought 150 paper plates to serve the food. But quickly, Kermit and his friends noticed that they had way more plates than food. All the food they brought might only fill 50 paper plates. After all this effort, this wasn't going to be enough. As they searched for a solution, someone suggested that they pray for God to bless the meal and help them feed everyone who was hungry. So they prayed and asked God to bless the food and the people who were going to eat it. When they said amen, the homeless people started lining up. While several friends spooned large portions of food onto paper plates, Kermit walked around the town square, looking for people to invite to the meal. Soon, Kermit had invited everyone he could find. He came back to see if there was any food left. Surprisingly, the food was all gone, and so were all the paper plates. Not a single item was left. Even though they only had enough food for 50 people, they had given out 150 generous plates. Kermit and his friends saw a miracle that day. God had blessed and multiplied the food. The students were very happy, and they spoke excitedly about what had happened. They remembered the miracle of the five loaves and two fish, when Jesus prayed over the boy's small lunch and then used it to feed the 5,000. Some students believed that Jesus performed the same miracle for them that day, and they never forgot this incredible gift from heaven. Today, Kermit, who is now the pastor of four churches, gratefully remembers his homework assignment to help others. This shaped his life and motivated him to continue helping those in need. The members Kermit pastors feed rice and beans to 150 people every Sabbath, and his other church feeds a similar number on Thursdays. As these churches feed the hungry, the town's homeless people find more than food. They also encounter Jesus the bread of life. Can you think of someone you can help? Share your ideas with your parents or Sabbath school teacher. God has a special plan for you. Now it's time that we would normally take up the offering. I just wanna mention that a minute. We have box at the back that you can give it if you're here today. If you would like to do it that way, you can give online several different ways, credit card or direct giving from your bank. I just want to encourage you, today's offering is for our local church budget. Now, this is very important. Right now, you feel cool air coming out. That's nice, and we enjoy it. But we have other expenses. We want to remember our roof. You know, we, we, we keep working on that, but there's a lot of expenses, but the combined budget goes from many different areas. It helps in Sabbath school, it helps pay our utilities, all the little expenses. You have your own household that you have to take care of, and it seems like in your own household you have little bills that just keep popping up. You really weren't expecting, you didn't know they were going to be there, but here it is, and you've got to pay it. Same way with our local church in the budget. Things keep coming up and we have to pay them. And I just want to commend you for the fine work you have been doing giving during this difficult time. It's very much appreciated and I'm sure you are receiving a rich blessing. If you are here with us today, if you're not among those numbers that Dr. Carrico was talking about in the hospital, I feel blessed just to be here. So let's remember our offering. In fact, I want to have a quick prayer over the offering. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the funds that you give us. We appreciate them so much. Please bless that money that we return to you, that we give back. 
help it to multiply, to grow as it goes to its many purposes. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, it is time for our regular prayer. And I want you to remember some things. I want you to remember some of our members who are sick. This COVID virus has disrupted so many lives. We have people who are by themselves. They are alone. They need comfort. It's up to us, but we ask that God would send the Holy Spirit to be with them. We ask that God would be with all of our members in whatever their circumstance. We just want to think about the different things that we're grateful for and the things that we need help for. Let's bow our heads. Let us kneel as we seek the Lord in prayer. Our dear, loving, and kind, and merciful God, we just thank you so much for the wonderful things you have done for us, for coming to this earth and dying on the cross that we might be saved. Lord, nothing that we do could come close to what you have done for us in doing that, for dying for all people, Lord. We just thank you for that. Please bless us now as we go about our daily lives here on this earth. Help us to keep you focused in our life. Please send the Holy Spirit to work on us daily, to work on this church that we will not forget during this time when we are not together as much as normal, when we are apart. Please set, let the Holy Spirit keep us together, to bind us together as one group who is devoted to you, Lord. Please be with this church. There are many things that are happening. We have VBS coming up. We have camp meeting coming up. All these things that can pull us closer together, Lord. Help us to be willing to participate, to do the things that we need to do, Lord. Help us to be witnesses for you, Lord. As the Sabbath school lesson taught us today, we are here to witness for you. Help us to be the kind of people that you would have us to be, the kind of church you would have us to be. Help us to be a loving and kind church lord please be with us now as we go into the sermon please send the holy spirit to open our eyes to be with us to help us to understand all that is said last of all lord today we celebrate the fourth of july our country's birth lord we thank you for the freedoms to worship you that we have here in this country lord we just ask that you Extend that for as long as possible that many more souls can be brought to you, Lord. Please bless us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Now, Fernando, we have something special today. We don't usually get many specials. If we have one, Fernando will have a song for us. Mr. Sabbath, uh, our first Lord, we're playing Great is the Lord. And I just want to uh, uh, remember everyone that the Lord is a great God, great to all of us. Is it working? Yeah, it is. Uh, I'm a... Uh, praise the Lord by playing Great is the Lord in the violin. And I want everyone to remember that, how, uh, how great is our Lord.
Amen. Now, I encourage you to stand, stand with us as we sing our song of consecration. Oh, how I love Jesus. Sabbath once again. We're glad to be in, in the house of the Lord. Can't you say amen? Yeah. Amen. And I want to say happy Independence Day to everyone. We're glad that we are United States citizens and we're glad to be living in the land of the free and the home of the brave. Amen. At this time I'd ask, I think it would be, it'd be okay and we wouldn't be unchristian if we could stand and say the Pledge of Allegiance. The flag is right over there. Can I get you to stand please? And we're going to say the Pledge of Allegiance. And it's all right if we're Christians. We can do that. Amen? Amen. Amen. Let's pledge allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amen. You may be seated. Amen. We used to say that every morning when I was in school years ago, long, long time ago. And so, and we also do the, used to do the preamble to the Constitution as well. And I think we've kind of fought, forgotten about that. But anyway, glad to be here in God's house today. Uh, Independence Day. This is an easy subject for me to kind of depict and go through, but you know how it is when preachers get together. Uh, whenever preachers start trying to throw together sermons, there's just so much stuff to pull from. But anyway, um, so Independence Day, of course, we know that uh, it was around uh, July the 4th, uh, 1776, when uh, these men came together. It was John Adams of Massachusetts, Thomas Jefferson of Virginia, Benjamin Franklin of Pennsylvania, Roger Sherman of Connecticut, and also Robert Livingston of New York, these five men, they were the, they were the point men to pen, begin to write this, uh, the Declaration of Independence. We were not a free country at that time. However, the Bible reminds us, we're reminded of that prophetic Bible passage in Revelation 12, 16, it says, the earth opened up and it helped the woman. Amen? You know, they were fleeing religious oppression. 
You couldn't go to church when you wanted to. You couldn't, you couldn't have your own beliefs in God. You had to follow the dictates of the, ch of the church at that time in, in Europe. And so God allowed these United States to open up and to be uh, uh, a place of refuge for his people, a place of refuge for the church of the living God. Let's pray. Father in heaven, in the name of Jesus we come. We're so thankful to be called children of God now. Come near to us and speak through us. We pray for receptive ears and open hearts, Lord, that the Spirit of God may find a place that we might be moved in such a way that we will improve our connection with you according to the power of the works in us. And that is through the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, I remember my Independence Day, folk. It was August 8, 1980. August 8, 1980. Do you remember your Independence Day? That is when I accepted Jesus Christ as my personal Savior. August 8, uh, 1980. 222 days in the year. That was the 20, 222nd day of the year. It was the 32nd Sabbath of the year. And uh, if we looked at the calendar, we wouldn't have that calendar again until 2036. And so that was my Independence Day. See, I remember. I don't think I got a mic. Should I have had a mic? They just want me to stay right here. I'm going to stay right here, all right? <laughs> but anyway, I remember my Independence Day. I remember, uh, I thought I knew what was going on. Young man uh, living in Boston and moving from place to place and just having uh, a, a good time, as young people do. Uh, but the spirit of the living God came close to me, and he spoke. Now, people say, oh, God won't speak to you. God spoke to me, and he said to me, how long are you going to keep on doing what you're doing? And so God placed people in my life. And, and as a result of coming together, I was baptized into the church of the living God. And I haven't turned my back since. Amen? That was my independence. And, we're wanted, and, and when we speak about independence, we're talking about being free. Now, uh, you know, the, we sing the song, Would you be free from your burden of sin? There's power in the blood. Amen? So I was, I was, came in contact with the man, Jesus Christ, as I never had before. And I accepted him. But the thing with it is, as we think about our Sabbath school lesson, you know, making friends with Jesus. Amen? Uh, we, 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 uh, like Brother Tom, we put it in reverse. We, we, they had the Sabbath school this morning, and they kind of got over the part about the Dead Sea. But Brother Tom said, wait, wait a minute, we got to talk about the Dead Sea, folk. Listen. We just cannot continue to have water. We cannot continue to see, re receive blessings and not impart them to others. You will die. You will die. And so the thing is, the good news of salvation, amen? amen? When you share the good news of salvation with other people, you also begin to take in more life as well. This is a, quite a journey that we are, we've been on, but I feel completely liberated and so that reminds me of our first parent. You know, let me just look a little bit again at uh, some of the things that were written with regard to the, the uh, Declaration of Independence. It says, um, here's how it began. In the, hum in the human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political band which uh, have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of their uh, the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of uh, nature's God entitled them a descent respect, a decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which impelled them uh, to, this, to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life Liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Folks, that's, that's the crux of the Declaration of Independence. Amen? Life and liberty and the pursuit of happiness. Amen? Praise God that, that we will open up this country and we have, we've had this window of opportunity to be able to latch on to Jesus, to get to know him for ourselves. And then not just to get to know him, but to tell the world, you know, I, I love the illustration in Sabbath school. You should have been in Sabbath school this morning. Uh, for those of you who are out there in the, 
uh, you can't come to church and you're online. We had a lively discussion. And, and one of the examples that was used, one of the brothers said, he fixed a light in his child's room. Uh, and everybody who came over to see, uh, to their house, the child wanted to come and say, oh, come see the light. Come and see. Come and see what, what's in my, what my dad put in my, in my room. And, and that's the way it is with Christians. Come see a man. That's the lady at the well, amen? Come and see the man. Get to know the man, Jesus Christ, whom to know his life eternal, amen? amen? How many of us want to live forever? Come on, how many of us want to live forever now, folks? This is your turn to participate. We all want to live forever. And there is, and I want to say this about how we're going to live forever. The Bible clearly says, uh, there is no name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. And that is through Jesus Christ. Amen? There is, there is only one way to God, and that is through Jesus Christ. Only one way. I will say there's a lot of ways to Jesus. Amen? Hallelujah. We're going to get into that in just a little bit. There are a lot of ways to get to Jesus. Now don't get mad at me because I said that. I'm, just, I'm, I'm telling you, folks, Jesus, Jesus, he goes out and he, and he grabs us. And he brings us back. See, you may be over here. Christ will come get you through the power of the Holy Spirit and drag you in because he wants to save you. That was the crux of our lesson. He said, well, you remember the first how it started? I'm trying to get off the, the Sabbath school lesson. I would that everyone be saved. Goodness gracious, what a God. He wants all of us to be saved. Don't ever, lose, don't ever forget that. He wants all of us to be saved. And so, now I run to my Bible and I, I think of Genesis in the very beginning. And, and Genesis 1, everything is blissful. Genesis 2, everything is blissful. It's repeated. But then we get to Genesis 3. Amen? Everybody say, oh, oh. Can we get anybody to say, oh, oh. Oh, oh. Okay, so we go to Genesis 3. And in Genesis 3, verse 8 and 9, it may be on the screen. Maybe we can get that on the screen. Genesis 3, 8 and 9. I think we might have uh, the... The New King James Version. Is it up on the screen yet? Okay, it's coming. And, but anyway, as we look at uh, Genesis 3, verse 8 and 9, uh, I just think about as Genesis 3 begins, you know, it starts out this way. I'm going to turn to my old King James Version. It says, it says now the serpent. You know, and, and you know, um, my neighbors have been telling us there's a lot of snakes around this year, this time, this year. And we've seen a few snakes, but anyway, that's neither. But the, it's Genesis 3 starts out, now the serpent. Now the serpent. Now we're going to go to verse 8. Let's look at verse 8, and let's read it together. What does it say? It says, and they heard the sound of the Lord, God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife hid themselves from the presence of the Lord God among the trees of the garden. Verse 9. Then the Lord God called to Adam, and he said to them, Where are you? Where are you? If you don't get anything else from this sermon today, I want you to remember this, this question and apply it to yourself. Where are you? Amen? Some of us have been in church for 10 years. Amen? Where are you? Some of us have been in church for 20 years. Where are you? Because when, when you think about it, you think of, we talk about Genesis 1 and Genesis 2, a perfect, a perfect, perfect people in a perfect place. And then we find at, at Genesis 3 starts out, and then the serpent, and we know what happened. We know what happened. They disobeyed God, amen? You know, the two were, they were encouraged to stay together, and somehow they got separated. And Satan took advantage of them. But I thank God for Jesus. And I believe this was Jesus that came to them in the cool of the day, in the evening. Where are you? Beloved, you know, it just breaks my heart when I think about it. It's in my own life, I'm not thinking about you, I'm thinking about my own life. When I, I find myself with, you know, I was raised, I was raised a seventh day Adventist Christian. Amen. I was, I, was, I was raised up in the church. I used to sing. I used to pray and ask God to bless me. He used to bless me in ways that were un, unimaginable. And somehow, Satan laid a trap for me. Amen? 
And that's what he continues to do even in the year 2020. He sets traps for us. And he seeks to bind us. And he wants to destroy us. But I'm so thankful that God has determined to save us eternally. Now I'm going to move on right now because now we find that we are in trouble. Humanity is in trouble. But I'm so thankful for Genesis 3.15. Can we put that on the screen? Very important. Genesis uh, chapter 3 verse 15. And it says, and I will, Jesus says, listen, I'll, listen I'm going I'm, I'm to let you know there's a way that's going to be performed for you to be able to, to be saved. He says, I will put enmity between you and the woman, and between your seed and, and her seed. He shall bruise your head, and you shall bruise his heel. That is the, great, the first pronouncement that there is to come the Messiah. Someone who's going to leave the throne of glory to rescue us, to save us. And beloved, we come here week after week and we, we call ourselves Christians and, 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 and sometimes can, we can kind of sit back and go to sleep and just, oh yeah, yeah, come on Jesus, come on. And just lay back and yeah, I'm a Christian. And it's because the devil has later put us in a stupor. You know. And we're not showing any signs of life. You know, I had a I had a little, 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 uh, well, let me put that away from This is a little object lesson for those who want to go to sleep at this time. I want to put this up here. You know, I want to put that up there, right? I, I, and this is called a pastor bus. And we used to have those in the fire department. I got to get back over here. It, it, I always want to go over there. Let me get this microphone here. Just move that Okay. 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 All right. There we go. All right. And turn it on, right? And we would... Uh, okay, here we go. On the fire department, we had these. They, they came on later on because they found that firefighters would... Sometimes we go in buildings and, and uh, we get lost and, and, you know, bad things would happen, you know, and some would die, you know. So they came up with these little gizmos. And it's called a pass device, right? And, and this, this thing is designed, right? It's designed... And if you don't move, you hear that little noise? It starts making that little noise. And, and, I, and I wanted to use this illustration because I wanted to, to remind us as Christians, you know, I heard the expression this morning, we got to stay on the move. We got to keep moving, amen? If we don't, if we don't keep moving, it's kind of old, so it's it just, I'll just turn it off because it's not working right here. But, but you understand what I'm saying. I think God puts in all of us. He, he puts in a little pass device. And he says, man, you, you got to keep moving. And how is it that we move? And we move closer and closer. We move closer and closer to him. That's God's ideal for each one of us. Is that we move. You remember Jacob, the ladder, climbing up the ladder? That's what God wants us to do. He wants us to move closer and closer to him. That's his desire. I have this I want to share with you. Find my glasses. Uh, hmm? Oh, sometimes I find myself with two pairs of glasses on. Uh, but you who are younger, you can laugh all you want, but uh, you stay on the road, you know what I'm talking about. But anyway, just wanted to share this uh, one quote. If I can get my hand on it. Um, one of these days I'm going to learn how to do a, what is it, they call it, PowerPoint. Is this? Um, here we go. God, and this is found in the book, uh, Prophets and King. God has provided divine assistance for all the emergencies to which our human resources are unequal. He gives the Holy Spirit to help in every straight to strengthen our hope and assurance, to illuminate our minds and purify our hearts. He provides opportunities and opens channels of working. If his people are watching at the indications of, of his providence, providence and are ready to cooperate with him, they will see mighty results. God wants to work through us, folk. He wants us to put him to the test. He wants us to... Uh, he wants us to see that he's real. You know, 
we, we do it every week. We talk about, uh, in Malachi 3, we talk about tithes and offerings. The Bible says, prove me now herewith, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing, there shall not be room enough to receive you. You remember reading that? And you, you, How many of you all have done it, tried God, you know, with tithes and offerings? You mean, you guys, anybody did that? I have. God works, and he rains down means that you are not entitled to, it seems. But that's how God works things out. Uh, but anyway, so we're going on here a little bit. We, we will just want to touch on that. And so um, as we see God coming and asking the question, where are you? Then we want to um, be reminded what Paul says in Galatians 4, verse 4 and 5. I don't know if we can just get to there. Galatians 4, verse 4 and 5. It says um, right here, is it on the screen? Uh, yeah, I'll have to. And then the next one will be Luke 4, 18 and 19. So if we can go to Galatians 5, 18. I'm sorry, Galatians 4, verse 4 and 5. We don't have, I can read it from my paper here. Sometimes it's good if we're all together there, you know. It's, it makes it a little bit better. I really got to get that uh, PowerPoint thing. Let me just go on and read it. Galatians 4, verse 4 and 5 says, but when the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son, made of a woman, made under the law. Verse 5, to redeem them that were under the law, that we might receive the adoptions of son. When the fullness of time was come, God sent forth his son. And that's what I, I, we, we, we want to talk about uh, just a little bit here. You know, we talked about Genesis 3.15. You know, and when you look at the Bible, you see Malachi and then you see Matthew. Well, you know, from Malachi to, to from the time from Malachi to Matthew, there were 400 years that God didn't speak to humanity. He said because God's people were going and they were apostatizing, going away from God, going into adultery, go, uh, going away as far away from God as they could. Go. They went into uh, captivity again and again. And so finally God said to Malachi, he said, I got nothing to say. How many of you all have had uh, uh, arguments in your home, you know, with your spouse and then you don't talk anymore? Anybody done that? I'm the only one. Oh, 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 she's got a hand. Okay. But sometimes, you know, like, I got nothing to say. Right? Uh, the newlyweds over here, uh, Brandy and the Williams, they know nothing about that. See, they're newlyweds. And praise God, the Lord has been blessing them. <laughs> you know, and, and congratulations. We're going to have some uh, new children, uh, child born. I just curse you. I say, I gave you two children. No, <laughs> but anyway, maybe, maybe they'll be twins. But praise God. Praise God for life. Amen. And we just pray that, that we will we'll learn how to, uh, in our, when we get silent, just like God. God says, I'm quiet. For 40 years, I'm quiet. But after that, in Galatians 4, it says, the fullness of time of God, I can't be quiet anymore. I love them. Amen. So I got to talk to them. And not just talk to them. I got to, I'm going to send my son to them. And so Jesus came through Mary. Amen. And he came on this mission to rescue us from the dregs of sin. Hallelujah. And so he was born in Bethlehem in a manger. And what does it say? And then when Jesus was in the dark, do we have Luke 4, verse 18 and 19? Luke 4, verse 18 and 19. He quotes Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. Uh, Luke 4, 18 and 19. Uh, if we can get that on the screen. Uh, uh, it's, it's, it's still not there. Okay. All right, here we go. And just, this is what Jesus gets up in the temple and he says, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those that are oppressed. We're talking about Independence Day. He came to set us free. Amen. He is coming to teach us how to live in a world that is full of sin and dread and misery. He's taught us how to, he comes and he teaches how to be free. Where did Jesus come from? Nazareth, right? Amen? There was no place on earth as bad as Nazareth. And Jesus, as a child, grew up in Nazareth. And, and he, but he did his father's will the entire time. Amen? 
That's what Jesus did. Came to live an example, to set an example. And we see that. And Jesus recognized his mission in life. He recognized what was printed in, in Isaiah 61, 1 and 2. But you know, the bottom line is, he came to shed light on this old, darkened world. And so, there again, uh, my next Bible text should be John 8, verse 31. It talks about freedom. God wants to set us free. John 8, verse 31. Speaking of Jesus, Jesus speaking uh, to the Jews, I think we have it here. John 8, 31, it says, Then Jesus said to those Jews who believed him, If you abide in my word, you, you are my disciples indeed. And let's go to the next uh, uh, verse 32. Verse 32 says what? It says, And you shall know the truth. What is it? There? Let's read this together. And you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Beloved, you know, that's one of the challenges that we face nowadays is that there's so much fake news going on out here, man. There's so many lies that are being tossed around. And we have to be careful about lies. Amen? The Bible says, lying lips. Do you know the rest of the Bible text? Lying lips are an abomination to God. Amen? That's, what, that's, that's how heinous God looks upon it. And I will take a stab and expose myself, you know, and say it like this, is that a lot of us, I've heard a lot of people talk bad about various types of people and their activities, and they say, oh, that's an abomination. It's an abomination. But the Bible also says that lying lips are an abomination. Amen? Amen? So we have to be mindful not to participate in abominable things. It's not to say that, you know, you condone what somebody is doing. The bottom line is, we should know the truth, and the truth will set us free. And uh, we just have to be mindful to stand to where Jesus would have us stand. We read uh, John 8, 31 and 32. Uh, do we have John 8, 33? Um, 33, 34, and 35. Okay, 33 says, They asked him, We are Abraham's seeds and have never seen the bondage to any, anyone. I don't know what they were talking about when they said that. How can you say you will, you, you will be made free? Verse 34. I don't know what they were saying about that. Verse 34 says, Jesus answered them, Most assuredly I say to you, whoever commits sin is a slave of sin. Verse 35. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but the son abides forever. Verse 36. Therefore, let's read this together. Therefore, if the son of man makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Blessed, beloved, we want to be free. Amen. We don't want to walk around in bondage. And this is what Satan does. That's what he's doing in this world nowadays. Uh, He's enslaving people in various ways. And uh, a lot of us, as we witness, we talked about witnessing, we said, oh, well, you know, I'm afraid, and I heard someone speaking earlier on the panel this morning, you know, well, well, I, I don't know, um, I, I would be embarrassed. And actually, we're afraid of rejection. You know, that's probably the biggest thing. You know, they'll, they'll think I'm a fool, or uh, they'll think this about me. You know, and, and I'll get back to the firehouse again. You know, when I first came on the fire department, there was always this distinction between blacks and whites. And um, I was one of two blacks who went into this firehouse. And, and I was a young Christian. God had, had opened my eyes and I was able to, and, and, and I had this, and I may have told this to someone, but I, I, it's worth it repeating because I'm praising God for it. But there was this uh, Irish gentleman that was my locker. He was my locker neighbor. He was right there. His locker was there and my locker was there. And every morning we would go to work. I'd get, and I was, his name was, I'll say his first name. I'd say, hi, Tommy, how you doing? And he wouldn't say a word. He wouldn't say a word. He would look up from his locker. He'd be steady unlocking his locker. And, and I would, and I, this went on for about two months. Hi, Tommy, how you doing? I'm a young Christian. And I would pray about this and this. And so after about three months, he said, I said, hi, Tommy, how you doing this one? He said, Ch that's all he said. He said, Ch hey, 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 you know, anyway, I know he said. And I got my clothes, I went in the back room, and I said, praise the Lord. Amen. God is beginning to work. 
He's beginning to work him on the man's heart. Don't you know when I left the fire department, that man was one of my best friends? I was afraid to see him coming in the fire. Oh, he, he moved to another firehouse. He said, oh, where's Jamie? Where's Jamie? He, he beat beating people down. Where? Come here, come here, come here, come here. They call me God. Come here, God. You know, and so the bottom line is God is, is he's calling us out of darkness to his marvelous light so that we can be a witness. You know, just because people don't like you, did they didn't like Jesus. You have still got to be kind and Christian to folk. You've, God has said, you are the light of the world. You are the salt of the earth. You've got a work to do. You, let me live in you. Let me shine in you so that you can bring some joy and happiness into people's lives. You know, this is a world of darkness. People are trying to find their way. If you're, if you're free, and it's just like, and that's what America's about. Statue of Liberty. Send me your, you know, what does it say? You tired him, send me your tired and bring him on in. That's what America stands for. Why? Because we have liberty. You can come and worship God in the beauty of holiness. You can come to know the Savior, whom to know everlasting life. Listen, beloved, we were not created to die. We weren't created to die. You know, look, you got no hair, wear these glasses, man. Fool around, we got. Mass going on. We were created to live like this. Jesus came to show us, to let us know that there is a better place. Amen. amen. Let everybody say amen. There is a better place. And it only comes through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. We're going to go on a little bit further. Hebrews 11, 4 says, I drew them with cords of a man, with bands of love. I, I love that Bible. He drew us with cords. You know, it's, just, it's like this. I, gotta, I always like to illustrate. It's like Jesus, like, he's like, ah! <laughs> pulling us, doing what he can to save us. And, he, and, and then when you look at the cross, he's going up on the cross and he's all bloody to me for you and for me. The Bible says, without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of, there is no forgiveness for sin unless there is some blood. And Jesus came, and he went on the cross, and he said, James needs some blood, because he's in big trouble. Amen? Amen? Listen, listen, I go on my, okay, okay, they can't hear me on that. They didn't need to hear that. James needs some blood. He's in big trouble. Beloved, we're all in trouble. Amen? We need to get out of here. You know, have you ever had anybody come to you and say, how do we get out of here? Amen? I have. I've been in burning buildings. and We're trapped. Amen? You're a Christian. How, how, do, how do we get out of here? Well, I know this guy, Jesus. Amen? Amen? People say, but I got all this stuff away. I got all this stuff dragging me down. He said, you can get it off. You can set it on your right. That's the Savior I know. The Bible says, we heard it quoted earlier today, 1 Peter 4, verse 12 and 13. It says, think it not strange concerning the fiery trials which are to come upon you. You know, because some of us say, oh, Lord, this is too much. I can't take it. I can't take it. And you know something? I do too. I go home sometimes and I think I break down God. Help me. Help me. Amen. Do you do that? I do. I do a, I do a whole lot more than that. But the bottom line is just if God said, okay, white guy, now fix yourself up, get yourself on back out there. Amen. Get on back out there and love them. Amen. That's what he calls us to do. He said, listen, uh, you're preaching a sermon. He said, well, well, I'm not going to go on the roster. You're preaching a sermon every day. People see you. They see you when you get mad. Hmm? They see you when you're glad. Listen, beloved. We're preaching a sermon every What message are you seeing, sending? The other question I, I wanted us to remember. What was the first question? Remember the first question? Where are you? Where are you? The second question comes to me, reminds me when I go to the Garden of Gethsemane. 
And we find, you know, Jesus being arrested. And, and then he finally winds up going back to Pilate, the teacher, the governor. He goes to Pilate. And Pilate is like, man, I, I'm trying to, you know, these Jews, they messing with me. And I'm trying to, you know, I don't find any fault in this man. And Pilate says, he finally, here's the other question he has. He asks this question. What do you want me to do with Jesus? And that's the question I'm asking you today. What are you going to do with Jesus? You going to sit him in a corner somewhere? We put him on the corner like that little plant over there. You don't see that? What are you going to do with Jesus? You know, you, you got to you got to be be mindful. We've got to be mindful that we are dead in our trespasses, dead in our sin. The only way we can get out of here is through Jesus. Amen. Look at the record. God's people murmuring and complaining. Murmuring and complaining. We have to be mindful of that. Amen? Amen? We have, we, we, we have, to, we have to see Jesus in all of our situations. We, 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 somehow we got to find, oh, Jesus, I can, you know, sometimes it's like this. Oh, God, I can't see you at all. Jesus, are you with me? You ever been, anybody been like that? I feel like I'm all alone. I feel like I'm all alone. But God says, I'm right, I'm right here with you. Uh, Paul says in Acts 14, verse 22, he says, we must through great tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. He, he gives us these reminders. Acts 43, verse uh, 2 and 3 says, uh, let's, let's turn, I want to turn that. Uh, can we get that on the screen? Acts 43, verse 2 and 3. I want to, I want to look at that. We can all read that together because we all go through difficult challenges. Through life. Acts 43, verse Two and three. I'm sorry, 43. X4, three. X43. Ooh, that's the wrong. That's the wrong one. Isaiah 43, two and three. You see what I'm talking about? You see how much we need Jesus? X, Isaiah 43. Isaiah 43, verse two and three. You know, and that's, that's another one of those issues of getting old. You can't think, keep things straight, you know? But praise God, be to God that we have church family, amen? That we can help each other. And uh, matter of fact, I, I love it. And let's read this together. Acts 43, verse 2 and 3. Let's read it together. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And though the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Nor shall the flame scorch you. Praise God. Verse 3. I'm going to read part of that. For I am the Lord your God, the Holy One of Israel, your Savior. We'll stop right there. That's what God says. You, when you go through those difficulties, I'm, I'm right there with you. Hebrews 13 says, I will never leave you or forsake you. You need to remember that. You know, we need to remember those very key Bible texts. Let me see if I can get back to my notes here. And I think that, um, how much, you know, I always do this, they say never should say how much time we should have. Um, second uh, Timothy 3 verse 12 says, Yea, all that who live will live God in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. And it says, but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. Beloved, uh, that's one of our challenges of the day. We talked about fake news and different things. You know, in Matthew, Matthew 24, Jesus talked about don't get fooled. If you, you know, he says that again and again. Matthew 24, read the chapter of Matthew 24. Don't be deceived. Don't get fooled. You know, and I think that was is going to be the one of the greatest deception of humanity on earth when when Satan comes out comes back to uh, appear as an angel of light. The Bible says he will appear as an angel of light, and I'm telling you, folk, it's going to be like it was in Boston when 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 the Pope came to visit Boston. It's going to be a lot of seven dead fittest folk running out there to see the Pope. They're going to be running out there to see the devil. And we know what the Bible says. He's going to appear as an angel of light. What are you going to do? What are you going to do with Jesus? You know the truth? Are you free to walk around in the truth? And you, are, do you have confidence 
to know by the power of the Holy Spirit that the, what the Bible says is true? Oh, beloved, now is the time. Now is the time to fortify our minds and our thinking and our belief in Jesus. Amen? Amen. Now is the time for us to put away our difficulties. And, and uh, I, go, I think I'm going to get ready to wind it up here. But I want us, I want us read this one passage that I found earlier. Um, and I've been telling this for the last couple of months. It says, many will be lost while hoping and desiring to be Christians. It says, they made no earnest effort. And therefore, there will be, they will be weighed in the balance and found wanting. The will must be exercised in the right direction. The will, you know. We must say, I will be a Christian. Let me hear you say that. I will be a Christian. We can do better. I will be a Christian. Amen. I will know the length and breadth and the height and depth of perfect love. The words of Jesus. Blessed are they which do hunger and thirst after righteousness. For they shall be filled. You know, uh, and, and see, the thing of it is, is that um, th there's a Bible text that says, uh, he is abundantly able to do all that we ask or think. I, I don't have that. But in this particular passage, it talks about that we will know the length and breadth and height and depth of, the, of perfect love. See, that's where we find our strength in knowing God. In knowing who Jesus is, we don't have any strength in and of ourselves. The Bible says, according to the power that worketh in you, right? But what is the power that works in you? It's only to choose the love of God. That's the power that will, you love so God so much that you're not going to eat that which you shouldn't eat. Amen. You love God so much that you're going you're gonna to keep the Sabbath day because it's a sign between me and you that he is, I am his and he is mine. Amen? It's a sign. That's why we say, remember the Sabbath day. Amen? Amen. To keep it holy. Six days shall we labor and do all our work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord our God. In it we should do any work. Thou, not thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger, that anything that's within the gates. For in six days God made, we believe God made the heaven and the earth, the sea and all that in them is. The Bible says he rested on the Sabbath day. Can't be saved by the Sabbath day. But you love Christ so much. That you follow in his footsteps. Amen. That's all it is, folks. Paul puts it this way. The love of Christ constrains me. Amen. The love of, I love God so much, I got to do right. Amen. You know, it's, it's a beautiful thing when we get the concept. You know, I was telling my wife the other day, you know, I like ginger ale. I, I, I love ginger ale. I like ginger ale. But I don't drink ginger <laughs> I don't drink ginger ale. Because I know ginger ale is not good for me. Amen? Well, don't get quiet on me now. Yeah. I'm talking about me. I'm not talking about you. I'm just talking about me. I don't drink ginger ale because I know that ginger ale is not good for me. All that sugar up in there. And, but anyway, there's neither here nor there. But I love God. And I, I think from, it's my love for God that helped me stop drinking ginger ale. It was my love for God that made me put cigarettes out. It was my love for God that helped me to stop drinking. It was my love for God that made me stop swearing. Amen. Amen. It was all love for God. Oh, I remember when I was first a Christian. We, we're going to cry. You can start playing something. Because I'll talk all afternoon, brother. You better start playing something. I remember... When I first became a Christian, and, and I still had a, a, a foul tongue, and I was with a bunch of Christian folk, and, and they said something, and I said, ooh, and I, ooh, and, and they all got quiet and walked away. And I'm like, oh, I said, oh, man. I played it over my mind. I know what I said. I said, ooh, man. Had a foul, so I had to pray, God, help me with my foul mouth. Amen? And he gave me the victory. I don't even say darn. Excuse me. I don't say it. I don't, mm, I don't say it. 
You know what I say now? Praise God. Hit my finger. Oh, praise the Lord. I'll hold it for a minute. Praise God. Anyway, it's time for us to close. So thankful that you, we've had this time together. I just pray that we will learn, as we think about Independence Day, that we will learn to love God, whom to know is life eternal, that we will walk in the freedom of God, that we will not hold grudges or be angry with folk and uh, just be mean. I want to be a Christian. I want to be saved with Jesus Christ. I pray that, to God that that will be our determination. May the Lord bless us as we leave from this place and go out and do his best. Dear loving Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the sermon we've just heard. Help us to take it to heart. Lord, when you ask, where are you, help us to be a Samuel and say, here am I, Lord. Amen. Please bless us now as we go out from this place. Be with us as we go out and help us to spread your influence throughout the world, throughout Tulsa. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <laughs>